Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I'm always striving to get to a deeper root cause about any given problem. And several years ago, um, SIBO came on the scene so that uh, they use all capitals, S-I-B-O. There's also CIFO with an F, uh, but it stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or fungal overgrowth. And the diet has been a low FODMAP diet and uh, to, to not feed these bacteria. There's also antibacterial, uh, antimicrobials you can take that kill the bacteria. There's a very expensive drug called rifaximin um, that you can take as well. The problem is that you can get uh, SIBO treated and it really tends to recur. So soon as that starts to happen, I think, oh, okay, we're, we're really not getting to the root cause here. The low FODMAP diet is a diet that's very difficult to follow. Uh, it excludes a lot of really healthy foods. And so I never really liked that either, but that's not to say this is not a real thing. Uh, you can do a breath test as a diagnostic test and find out that indeed you do have these bacteria and they're in the small intestine uh, versus where they should be the large intestine. So let's look at this. We have our stomach, which is a bag of acid. So it's supposed to be a bag of hydrochloric acid and, and it you know, breaks down the food and of course has a very highly acidic environment. And then the, the food leaves the stomach and it goes into the small intestine and then pancreatic enzymes come in and pancreatic enzymes are designed to um, digest all types of food, protein, fat, and carbohydrates. So all food types and then you also have bile so bile is produced by your liver and bile is a detergent and and it's antitoxin so it handles toxins and it's antimicrobial naturally so there we have a key so as we've started to work with this with patients what we've seen is that it kind of harkens back to way back when I first started in practice and everything was candida kill the candida, the candida is bad. And certainly an overgrowth of candida is troublesome, but come to find out that candida is a, nor is a natural constituent of your bowel, of your large intestine. It's supposed to be there. It's just not supposed to be there overly abundantly. And so again, these bacteria are supposed to be in your colon. They're just, that's below large intestine. They're just not supposed to be high in the small intestine. So you go, okay, why are they migrating and then proliferating there? It's because you aren't keeping them at bay. And so one of the key things that we're finding you certainly can look at stomach acid and pancreatic enzymes, but over and above that, what we're finding that's a real linchpin on this is that bile flow is compromised. And so that natural detergent and antimicrobial and antitoxic um, characteristics of bile are not happening because your bile is not flowing the way it should. And this happens because of over you know, bad diet, um, the, the, the liver gets kind of sludgy and the bile gets sludgy and so it's not flowing well. And um, there's a lot of, there's different things you can do depending on the individual. Um, back in the day, things were called bitters and bitters have been around for hundreds of years and um, they uh, are known to they're called uh, cologogs, but anyway, it's to get bile flow going. So we use bitters here uh, at the practice and they're not hard to find. Um, some are better than others, but they make a huge difference in the why of SIBO or CIFO and really get to the root cause. So yes, we always wanna look at food sensitivities and um, I'm not saying we don't necessarily need to kill some uh, bacteria or fungi or parasites that might be present, but the fact that they keep moving up and making people so uncomfortable in the bowel, there is a natural suppressor of these that keep them in their place and not escaping up into your small intestine, and that is bile flow. So uh, I just really wanted to share that as we have more and more cases, I will share very specifics on it. Um, 
but definitely you can play with bitters and see how you do. It's something you take before meals. You can also take them after meals. Um, these, uh, it's a combination of, of, of different herbs and plants and they've been around literally for hundreds of years, uh, but our uh, overabundance of food and our bad food that we eat really gets the bile uh, overwhelmed and that's where intermittent fasting also comes in. It gives the body a break. So a good 12, 13 hour fast at night is, is going to be helpful as well. So the actual specific for each person, there'll be a little bit of, you know, difference, but I really wanted to share this because so many people are suffering. Um, I had to check for a patient recently that wanted to try the rifaximin and it was over a thousand dollars for this, for this drug. And as I said, most people, that's not enough. It's not enough because it's not root cause. So anyway, I hope uh, that was informative. If you're having any digestive problems, it's definitely an area that we excel at naturally. And we're always trying to regain natural balance. So uh, please reach out. The telephone number here is 408-733-0400.